How was up, y'all? It's poppin'. It's D. About to react to this Patrick CC vid. It's titled "How Ryan Garcia Lost His Entire Career in One Night." Um, I do recall this being like a big story. I don't know the details of it, um, but he did a whole breakdown. Um, so definitely want to get around to checking this out and seeing what happened and why. You know, he lost his career. Let's watch. Just 45 days before his fight against Devin Haney, the entire internet believed Ryan Garcia was in need of a psychiatric evaluation, possibly an admission to rehab, or at least restricted access to social media because his erratic behavior was sending him into an all-out downward spiral. He was, under no circumstances, capable of fighting the undefeated 31-0 champion. And then, he absolutely demolished his opponent, becoming victorious in a fight that he was destined to lose. He even bet $2 million on himself to win, a wager that earned him $12 million. Ryan trolled his opponent, the world, and everyone went from calling him crazy to a genius. But Ryan was a ticking time bomb. He has an ego the size of Mount Rushmore, a clear out alcohol addiction, and an evil darkness inside of him that finally revealed itself during a Twitter rant that got him banned from boxing forever. However, to understand how it got so bad, no, we must go back to 105 days before his fight where Ryan announced that he was getting divorced from his wife, Andrea Selena. Ryan's wife, Shoot. Drea, gave birth to their second yeah. child on December 23rd, 2023, but they waited to post about it on social media until January 5th. Less than one hour after Ryan made the post, he also made a formal statement that he would be getting a divorce from the same woman who just gave birth to his son. The narrative that Ryan divorced his Damn, wife brother. within an hour of their son being born permeated throughout the internet. Ryan said that this was not true and that he just decided to announce to the public both of these major life events at the same time. People who despised Ryan looked at this as a cowardly move and that he was a deadbeat. His fans speculated that maybe this woman cheated on him or maybe that this was yeah, not a child, but the court documents say that they split due to irreconcilable differences, which doesn't really help us understand the yeah. truth. Regardless, going through a divorce is extremely stressful, especially when there are children involved. People began noticing a transformation in Ryan. He seemed to have gained weight. His face looked bloated. His speech was slurred in interviews. He was constantly okay. twitching and moving around. Just look at the before and after differences in his speech, clarity, and body language. I think that's the most important thing in my life that's the thing that keeps me as uh, productive and efficient as I could possibly be and calm because when I'm not fighting you know I don't know where to put all this energy I have so much energy I have so much thoughts and so much you know passion for everything I do there if I don't have a fight you know I'm like what do I do I mean it was really the people like influencing me like damn that hurt I don't really care at the, if I'm going deep down in my heart, like, I don't really care. I don't show up. I don't care. In an interview with Ariel Hawani, fans <laughs> suspected he may have been on substances. You feel confident that you can hang... You know, he's not typically a ground fighter, but obviously... Perfect. Wow. Do you have beef with him? No, I mean, he'd been calling me out for a while. You know, okay. He called me out first. Ariel trying to have a discussion with a high teenager. Coke, weed, and ego is a hell of a combo for this kid. And at first, this definitely seemed like a stretch. These were probably just some of his haters trying to spread rumors. But less than a week later, his cryptic social media posts raised real concerns. On March 3rd, 2024, a video posted to Ryan's Twitter seemingly reported his death. The caption read, March 3rd, Sunday, 2024, we slit RG throat and threw him in a basket nobody will find him oh video is exactly 666 in time we told you we were coming the violent message is followed by a series of randomly pressed letters that closes with the sentence satan is sitting at the top now 666 the same video was posted on instagram with the caption this is why you don't mess with us at the top with even more gibberish. Also note that the satanic demon Baphomet is mentioned in the caption. While some people immediately thought he was just trolling to sell the fight, or his ex-wife posted a message that. stating that she was concerned for him. Wow. He may seem fine, but he is not. I know in my heart he is he being heavily fine. oppressed. No. This is not a troll. I'm genuinely concerned, and so is all his family members. We are not a part of any of this, and we want him to get better, but this is real. Pray for him. Ryan tried to clear the air the next day with this video, but it left people even more confused. I personally wanted just to send out a video to the people that love me and my fans, um, family that's concerned that um, I'm okay. I'm not dead. I believe in Jesus. So that means you okay? Because you alive? And, you know, I've, they try to put me in jail. They 
blocking my cards. I can't access my money. Nobody's hitting me back. I don't know what's going on, but um, just know I'm okay. Who are they? Who tried to put him in jail? Who is controlling his money? Two days later, Ryan Garcia took to Twitter to claim that he was kidnapped by the higher up elites and forced to watch the most horrific crime known to man. Hey bro, all right, talk to us. Bro, I don't give a f bro. They held me down, they made me watch the little kids get I don't give a f anymore. I'm not joking, bro. Oh I my God. Proof. Who? You know the higher elites, bro. You already know who they are, bro. You're proof of this on your phone? Yes, of course I do. So you talking about? Of course. If Alex can get a fucking video from the Bohemian Grove, of course I could. Brian sounds He's distraught. Like, He's slurring his words. Yeah, his fans are even more concerned than ever. He There's doubled down in a series of alarming tweets. I won't read all of them, but some of the more cryptic ones read, Before I go, I want to release everything. Does no one care about the children? Shame on y'all for staying quiet. You know who you are. He also mentioned Bohemian Grove a few different times. The Bohemian Grove is a 2,700-acre private campground in Monte Rio, California. It is home to an extremely exclusive gentleman's club that hosts a two-week retreat every July where some of the most powerful men in the world attend. During the first weekend of the summer encampment, robed figures sacrifice an effigy as part of a ritual meant to banish all worries from the gathered members. Yes, they make a sacrifice every year during the retreat, but- See, side note, this is why <laughs> when I made the vid about that white party that Michael Rubin throws, that's why I was like, mm, I don't trust it. I mean, a part of me is joking because I don't fucking know what's going on there um but a part of that is because when you hear about all of these powerful people gathering in one place it's usually not for a good purpose <laughs> and you know of course they have the disguise it as if oh it's just a retreat we're just chilling together are y'all what the fuck y'all doing you know because there have been so many cases of you know these powerful people gathering to do some heinous shit so you got to kind of side eye when you have too many powerful people in one room at one time it's like hmm, y'all all here at the same time i don't know especially with that party situation it's like of all the parties of all the things to do in the summertime y'all all clear jaw schedule so y'all can all be free on this one day it's just something about that just seems off and yeah this is why <laughs> This is why I have that thinking. Because you got to think, these celebrities are busy as fuck. The, it, think about how difficult it is to get that many of them in one room on, for one day. You know, you know how difficult that is for all of those very busy ace-list celebrities? That's very difficult. And those parties are thrown like, and it's, it's so, so many big A-list celebrities. So it's like, that's not normal. The same thing with Diddy. He was also throwing parties where a, a whole bunch of A-list people would be there at one time and look what got exposed about Diddy. Anyway. They ascertain that it is not a real living being. The Grove has been the center of many conspiracies for decades, claiming that human lives are sacrificed here. But of course, we don't know. Here, we don't and know. the powerful elites have dark secrets that they didn't <coughs> We do know that the Manhattan Project planning meeting took place here in September 1942, which led to the creation and the ultimate firing of the atomic bomb. See, However, you can also find bullshit. hundreds of posts from people who worked at Bohemian Grove that say it's nothing more than a summer camp for rich boomers who just get okay. drunk for two weeks straight. They do admit that a But wait, they said it's highly secretive. So yeah, maybe you just don't fucking know. They ain't let yo... I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> I was like, yo, worker ass, nothing wrong with being a worker. But the point is, like, it's not like, oh, I have inside information. I was a janitor. Why would they share what they're doing with the, you know? So I was like, all right, let's use common sense. Like, not everybody, even though you were there, that doesn't mean you're going to automatically have this insight into as to what was going on camp for rich boomers who just get drunk for two weeks straight. They do admit that a weird energy permeates throughout the camp, and the members have a strange love for urinating on the trees, but nobody claims to have seen anything worth sharing with Alex Jones. Either way, it's rare to see a celebrity as famous as Ryan speak about such conspiracies, and we have seen other celebs speak out about similar powerful figures in the industry, only to be blacklisted from the industry or labeled as crazy. But the follow-up post that Ryan made after his Twitter rant did not ease conspiracy theorists minds uh, over these past couple of days you guys have seen some pretty intense things i understand why what is they he what i understand what they look like but i'm coming back to announce i'm not going to speak on any other topic other than boxing sports and my fight 
That's the only thing I'm going to be talking about. Ryan is seemingly sedated and reading off a script in a very robotic manner. More theories took place in the comments about him being silenced by the elites, <laughs> or that this isn't actually him and he was replaced by a clone, or this is some sort of humiliation ritual. His opponent, Devin Haney, says otherwise. He tweeted, This is all an act, y'all. The fight is happening on April 20th. He's just playing crazy to sell it, which is weird because there are people out there who are actually crazy, but he's just acting for attention. There is no doubt that Ryan's antics developed mass interest in this fight. It's not like Ryan and Devin had this long-standing real-life beef, which is usually the main reason why any fight gets a ton of hype. Because when you watch their face-offs and trash talk moments, they seem more like two people just having a mild disagreement. I don't know how you won that. <laughs> it's it's not a mild I gave you an eight count. You did not give me an eight count. You don't remember that fight in the uh, arena? Me. No, you beat me though. I'll give you that. So how do I get a point taken away from one? Because you won. You beat me all three rounds. Duh. You can still win. Think about it. No, but I got a point taken away. It seemed like every day Ryan was an entirely different person. And even though the conspiracy theories and obscure tweets slowed down, his mental health I mean, and potential substance use was still in question. Like I've been feeling a lot of hurt because I tried myself. I tried my hardest to share all the, the love that he gave me. And I tried to help out the kids. And I, tried my I would best. argue that even people who play crazy are crazy. Cause if you, if you even put yourself in that mind frame, like and you gotta think about <laughs> the type of person it takes to pretend to be crazy. Everybody trying to break me down. Rich, poor, sad, happy, mad. I'm the same mother. I'm the same dude that shows you I got big balls. All you have in this life is your balls and your word. And I hang that. Sh everybody straight up exactly at the end of the day i'm like scarface say hello right. to my big friend no little friend this is a big friend when i was on the katie trail literally i was on the, oh i'm drunk say less i was at, on the katie trail and i told a woman do you support pedophiles she looked me in the eyes and says absolutely with a thumbs up that is crazy and yes and this yes i'm running for president i'm not even kidding this one, hey, I'm gonna take a toast to all the haters. No oh, more liquor. Boy, you drank all that bottle. Empty, like drank it all myself. Home. But despite what the internet had to say, Ryan was confident that he would win this fight. He had so much confidence that he did not seem to take his opponent seriously. You might hear me singing one of my songs between the rounds and just like, no, 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 no. Do you wanna hear one of my songs? No. I'm gonna make a new one. Dingy, cute, doing what I do. All white, looking nice. Okay, come through. He even showed up to the weigh-ins drinking a beer. Ryan made a deal with Haney's team beforehand that he would pay them $500,000 for every pound overweight he was, which ended up being a bad move because Ryan weighed in at 143 pounds, meaning he owed them $1.5 million, but he honored his deal and paid them the seven figures. If a boxer comes in overweight, they can technically disqualify him, but Devin Haney insisted that he did not care and the fight should go on. And at any point, did you consider not taking the fight, considering he missed weight by over three? Of course not. It don't matter what way he, can, what, what, what way he came in. I'm a true champion, and I will show it. It was now just a couple of days before the bout, and the I don't know anything about sports. Maybe it is. that Ryan was crashing out, and this would be one of the most devastatingly one-sided fights in history. It's also important to understand that Devin Haney was undefeated, so it seemed like a mm -hmm. no-brainer that he would walk away with the W. I mean, that's for sure what the odds makers thought. The odds for Devin Haney to win were overwhelmingly favoring him, somewhere as high as minus 900. Minus 800, but the average seemed to be around minus 600, which means that you would have to bet $600 to make 100. The mm -hmm. odds for Ryan to win were placed at plus 550, meaning your bet would be multiplied by five and a half if Ryan won. And a lot of people lost a lot of money that night because even though the score indicates Ryan won by split decision, he dominated Haney in the ring, knocking him down three times, even though it should have been six, oh, yeah, because Haney that. managed to hang on to Ryan's waist for dear life. Ryan looked as sharp as ever. He was not playing games. He was not dancing around or hugging. He was there for a brawl and he came out victorious against all odds, against all insanity allegations and potential reason. alcohol abuse. Ryan gave Devin Haney his first loss. And within 72 hours of the fight being over, he sat down with Patrick Bet David and told the world that this was a master plan to convince everyone he was crazy so they doubted him. 
mean, my, my cameraman Chance, Ajay's there. Um, I, we have a pre-recorded months ago. What did I say was gonna happen? I said I'm about to make sure everybody thinks I'm gonna go crazy. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna Again, do I would argue that you are crazy for playing crazy. <laughs> that was wow, gonna be the, called the Great Escape. Like I have it all documented. I was already kind of uh, you know weeks and weeks and months behind, and I was not gonna budge for nobody. It didn't matter if I went on his podcast, anybody's podcast. I was acting like sporadic, like just like crazy. I was going in. Man, it was, space, the, it was just like spaces. Just... The, I'll do this with my nose. Like, <laughs> non, and then, like, it's just a tick. I had everything. I, I just like, but then you make adjustments too. What was real though is um, at times I did drink a little bit during camp because uh, I like to drink. Ryan claims that basically all of his pre-fight antics were a lie, besides the drinking, which does explain his face being so bloated. But he did tell Jake Paul on a FaceTime call that the beer he drank at the weigh-ins was fake. Yo, do you have an extra beer? No, I can get you one. All right. You said it was what? It was uh, apple juice and sparkling water. Oh, shit. Yeah, I thought it was real. And although faking multiple manic episodes is definitely a twisted way to get attention, he did exactly. double down on his advocacy for crimes against children. There's actually really people in the front lines of all this. You know, I'm in contact with them. Um, his name is Jaco. I'm, I'm not gonna say his last name, but basically he's a big advocate. He goes to Congress all the time to speak about child trafficking and he could confirm all these things. The kid, did you actually have videos of kids? Things that I actually stuff? do. I do have videos. You have videos? Yes, we have videos. Who, has seen them? Who have you shown them to? Uh, the guy Jacob, yeah, he has a, we're gonna go to Congress okay. with it. But the most shocking story that came from this was that Ryan wagered a $2 million bet on himself to win, which yes, is legal. Boxing is the only sport that allows athletes to bet on themselves. Oh. However, they cannot bet on themselves to lose, obviously. Since Ryan's odds were at plus 550, that would mean his payout would be somewhere around 10 to $12 million. Yeah, There's okay. a story of you bet $2 million on yourself. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Is, that, is that a true yeah, story? Story. I and you made 12 million bucks? I made 12 million bucks. Sick. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was cool, too. But basically, uh, um, I gave everybody... I would argue he kind of sound a little off here. Like, his words seem a little slurred here. Uh, uh, yeah. But maybe it's the liquor, because he admitted that he does like to drink. Yeah, that was cool, too. But basically, uh, um, I gave everybody the word to place that bet. I just felt, like, really disrespected by Vegas. And in my head, I said, this is going to be the biggest Las Vegas ever had in a minute. Because uh, they were, like... I just felt like it was disrespectful. Now, we don't have any proof that Ryan made this bet. He is the same guy who lied about literally everything leading up to this fight. So at this point, it's kind of hard to believe anything he says. But the entire internet did a 180 overnight. No more calling him crazy. Now, they were calling him a genius. But just before Ryan could walk away, the genius victor who played the world and got filthy rich, breaking news hit just days after the fight that Ryan tested positive yeah, for performance-enhancing drugs. ESPN reported... Bad. Star boxer Ryan Garcia tested positive for the performance enhancing substance Oster in the, the back day before story, and the day of his upset win over Devin Haney last month. Now there is a due process that people need to respect when it comes to a fighter testing positive. They have an additional B sample test to essentially double check the results. These trials take at least a few weeks, sometimes even months, to 100% certify that someone is guilty of doping. However, the very next day after the news broke, Devin Haney went on ESPN to essentially declare Ryan as a cheater. You know, during the build-up, we've seen a lot of interesting things from him. You know, we've seen his character. Uh, we've seen the guy cheat. We, 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 we see the type of person that he is. Ryan immediately proclaimed his innocence. These dudes are weirdos, bro. They're trying to take a young Christian man down. I would never, ever take steroids in my life. And we already know that. I don't cheat, bro. This is God-given. God-given. I'm the Mexican strongest. What? And when you see what was actually found in his system, you will realize there's an extremely low chance that Ryan was intentionally using these PEDs to gain an advantage. Mm -hmm. Osterine is a research chemical, not an FDA-approved drug. It is supposed to enhance lean muscle growth and strength. Victor Conte, who is an extremely controversial sports nutrition expert banned from every sport besides boxing, tweeted, Fake news is being spewed about the New York State Athletic Commission's charge
chart of allowable limits for PEDs, Osterine has a 0.1 nanograms per milliliter allowable limit, and Ryan Garcia had 6 nanograms per milliliter reported for 419, which is 60 times over the limit. Although 60 times over sounds like an insane stat, we are talking about micrograms, mm. minuscule amounts of the drug. According to Osterine's clinical trials, 3 milligrams is where the test shows to actually have an impact on performance. In general, what we see when we dig into the literature is that Osterine at a dose of about 3 milligrams is kind of where you start to get into the territory of increases in power, something that could be chalked up to useful in sport. Anything below that, you're not really getting, especially as a male, highly unlikely to be getting anything worth taking it to begin with if you're an athlete with even a room temperature iq coach on your side would hopefully tell you this is not the compound you want to be using like there is no sane not completely idiotic person who would ever suggest using Osterine for P as a PED in boxing. Not only did Ryan have a minuscule amount in his system, but when you consider that he tested positive the day before and the day of the fight, that would not be enough time for the drug to actually improve his performance. He would have had to have been taking much larger doses weeks in advance. This puts into question that Ryan may have taken the drug by accident, which could be possible. Perhaps he took a supplement that he thought was 100% legal, but it wasn't. He brought up numerous times that he took ashwagandha, which is an evergreen shrub that contains chemicals that might help calm the brain and reduce stress, which he thought might have something to do with the positive test. However, his main reason as to why he is being falsely accused actually makes a lot of sense. Victor Conte is connected to Snack. Snack is who sponsors Devin Haney. He was known to be a chemist and a biohacker that helped a bunch of base players cheat. He got banned from baseball. Stick with me here for a second because I got to give a little background. Victor Conte is the founder of the Balco Lab, a business that supplied anabolic steroids to professional athletes and Olympians in the 80s and 90s. Conte developed, with the help of a chemist, his own steroid that was undetectable in athlete testing. After 14 years of doping the biggest athletes in the world, including Barry Bonds, Marion Jones, Jason Giambi, Shane Mosley, just to name a few, Conte was tried and found guilty in 2003 for conspiring to distribute performance enhancing drugs to more than 30 baseball, football, and track and field stars. Mm. After serving just four months in prison, he proclaims his innocence to this day. <laughs> so from 84 all the way until 2000, Incredible. everything that Balco and Snack did was completely legal, completely clean, no athletes were ever given any sort of performance enhancing drug. Victor wrote the paper thin line of what is illegal and what is simply a deep understanding and manipulation of the rules his whole career. I know that the anti-doping rules that are in place are so easy for the athletes to beat. It's like taking candy from a baby. Do I feel that I was doing something different than other athletes and coaches and trainers had done for throughout the entire history of the Olympic sport? The answer is no. I mean, the, the whole history of the Olympic Games is just full of corruption, cover-up, performance-enhancing drug use. It's not what the world thinks it is. It's a fraud. It's a fraud. Despite Victor's crimes, he got right back into the world of sports nutrition after being released from prison. But this time around, he was claiming to be an anti-doping advocate. He started a new company that is basically the same as Balco called Snack, which is his supplement company that they say has been pioneering the expansion of human potential by utilizing clinical science to drive athletic performance. Snack is a sponsor of Devin Haney, who works one-on-one -on -one with Victor Conte. Additionally, Victor has associations with Vada, the Voluntary Anti-Doping Association. Vada is the company that performed the drug test on Ryan. Now, Victor is not the owner nor founder of Vada, and they claim he has no association with the company, but he is very much an outspoken advocate for them. And I became an, an outspoken anti-doping advocate in 2005, so I refer my fighters to Vada. That's the extent, you know, of my relationship. Did I introduce Margaret Goodman and Flip Hamonsky that, that run Vada, two people like Dick Pound, who was the founding chairman of WADA, the World yeah. Anti-Doping Agency, and others that, that helped them be able to do the testing at WADA accredited labs. Yes, I made some introductions, but nothing more than that. So is it suspicious that the guy who literally created steroids that don't yes. show up on drug tests works directly with Ryan's opponent and is a huge advocate with ties to the company that is doing the drug test on Ryan? Mm. 
Well, that's up for you to decide. Brian Garcia has been served a one-year ban until April 20th, 2025. His victory was removed from him and ruled as a no contest. Therefore, yeah. Devin Haney technically retains his undefeated record. Mm. Brian also had to forfeit his prize earnings of $1.2 million. Luckily, he bet on himself. Unless the Vegas pit bosses are trying to that. track him down and get their refund as well. Mm. At the end of the day, it is Ryan's responsibility to know exactly what goes into his body. He knows how serious drug testing is in this sport and if the legal limit for a drug is zero then anything over that is cheating end of story even if it was an accident or a setup having specific drugs in your system on the day of the fight is against the rules and considered cheating however i do find it odd that victor conte said this let's for just a moment talk about devin haney my guy and how horrible this is for him that he has to deal with this stuff and and until we get a reasonable explanation from Ryan, the burden of proof is on him to prove there was no intent to cheat. Because otherwise, I don't care if somebody snuck into your room and spiked your toothpaste, you're gonna be responsible. It seemed very specific that he mentioned someone sneaking drugs yeah, into their opponent's toothpaste specific. as a setup. And what you I mean, mean you're responsible? Like, that's fucked up. I mean, yeah, technically you are responsible, but you were blindsided. Like, it's not technically your fault. I didn't even know that was possible, so. Kind of sounds like someone who is speaking from experience. Mm -hmm. Now with Ryan feeling like he was set up, combined with his excessive alcohol consumption, his life began crashing down. Mm -hmm. His mother was diagnosed with cancer and he tweeted, if my mom dies, I'm going with her. One week later, he was arrested in Los Angeles for felony vandalism after a Beverly Hills hotel accused him of causing an estimated $15,000 in damage. Then the next week, he went viral again for his drunken antics at a poker game alongside other celebrities like Jimmy Butler, Ninja and Dan Blazarian. Cheers. Is he gonna chunk that whole thing? All right, all right. Call me. A diamond would be insane. It feels great. Um, I love Jesus, and uh, I'm feeling great. Even if you wanted to give Ryan the benefit of the doubt and see his perspective, he would send out some ridiculous tweet or go on a drunken rant that made you realize no 25-year-old should be acting like this. And on July 4th, 2024, he would officially cross the line. Ryan joined a Twitter space in a drunken stupor and in less than six minutes managed to finally do irreversible damage. Niggas are sending niggas to the ER and y'all niggas worried about other people saying the ER, the RR, when niggas are sending niggas to the ER. Oh, not audio. So as this is playing out, I'm thinking in my head, like, what if somebody hacked his Twitter and they you know, sent all these tweets out because you just never know. And that last story was very suspicious. But there's audio of him saying these things. I mm, can't excuse it. The fact that you're yeah. speaking on black on black crime, which doesn't get speak about enough, you know what Don't I mean? Speak but that about is a real thing, right? I guess what? I bet y'all hate me. George Floyd. That Floyd. nigga was a crackhead, bro. He died because he had fentanyl in his system. Hey, 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 look, hey, let's go bring George Floyd back to life and kill that. <laughs> and it's like hey, hey. the reason why I'm even bringing it up because it's like that that's discussed heavily. So what do you mean that it's not discussed enough? It's discussed too much, I would argue. And whatever, that's a whole different conversation. Okay, now what? Dad, if you want to talk about what's going on in the world, you no, want to know. No, that's the problem. You're, 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 you're a culture vulture. You want to be a Muslim because Muslims support you. You weird, bro. You're like a gay ass fat, bro. Both you and Muslims as little kids. Bro, all you Muslims, bro. All you Muslim ass, weird ass. Well, sir, you're going to regret saying all of this. Yeah. Guess what? Guess what? I will never be touched because I'm with God. I'm with Jesus. I, I'm not regretting it. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm not. I've never been touched in my life. Right, you want to be a representative of Christianity, this Shut is not up, the way God, you should God, be representing God, bro. Shut up. Not, not my God, my God, you're doing You're off and hate him. Uh, off and hate him. Yeah, that. 
Brian thought he could just go on the internet and speak without consequences because that's exactly what he has done for the past yeah, few about months. Say, it's but this time, the past. he finally this is too said much, too though. much. Yeah. And in less than 24 hours, Ryan Garcia was officially expelled by the World Boxing Council Jeez. after the president tweeted, I am hereby expelling Ryan Garcia from any activity with our organization. We reject any form of discrimination. I fear for Ryan's well-being as he has declined multiple attempts for our help with mental health and substance abuse. Mm. And if you thought Ryan woke up so and had a moment of clarity after realizing he let the darkest part of his mind spill out onto the internet, you'd be wrong. Oh. And guess what? I'm not apologizing for nothing. You ain't gonna catch me apologizing. Followed by more empty apology tweets like, I take all responsibility for my words. I misunderstood. I just got a lot of trauma. I struggle with substance abuse and it's hard for me with everything going on. I actually love black people, no cap, which is why I'm actually sad I offended all my black family and friends. Also to the Muslim community and all my homies that are Muslims, my bad. Nobody thought these apologies were sincere. The damage had been done. His own family was forced to- What did he say? I let Sneeko get <laughs> Wait, wait. Not him dragging Sneeko in this. So, Sneeko is also a racist who uses the hard R. Got it. Thanks for revealing that information. When he talks shit about the Holy Spirit, everyone tells me Christians about the disrespect side. What? Let Muslim people, I don't believe y'all are pedos. I do believe there are pedos in every religion because men and humans are flawed and I don't stand with none of that. Also to the Muslim community and all my homies that are Muslims, my bad. Nobody thought these apologies were sincere. The damage had been done. His okay. own family was forced to make a statement denouncing everything he said. Ryan has been open about his ongoing struggle with mental health over the years and as a family we are committed to ensuring and encouraging that he receives the necessary help to navigate this very challenging time. His father is now even pleading for him to go to rehab. I would love for him to get some type of therapy when it comes to his drinking. But as long as Ryan has access mm. to social media, he will continue to make posts that just dig a deeper hole for himself and reveal his true intentions. If he does not change his behavior, he will have thrown away his entire life's work and may never step into the see. ring again. Oh my god. <laughs> That was a lot. I definitely didn't have this full story whatsoever. I for sure saw these headlines that didn't look deep into it. And I definitely reacted to that video um, about, you know, him taking performance enhancers. But given the backstory, very, very interesting because that situation is highly suspicious. I don't know for sure if, you know, he was drugged and people, you know, deliberately sabotaged him. But, you know, it, it does look a little questionable but as far as his other shit about him being racist and sabotaging himself like clearly he needs help so hopefully he gets the help he needs but he's already done a lot of damage so it is what it is y'all let me know what y'all think though let me know what other videos you want to watch and i'll see you on the next one bye